This is Blender 101, presented by Kondor Heidi of Lumpology Studio. Hello, Kondor Heidi here from Lumpology.com, and today we're going to be learning how to navigate and install the Android version of Blender. Along the way, we're going to be learning how to use a few pieces of software as well as learning a few DIY tricks you can use to make your life easier. For starters, we're going to need a few pieces of software. Go to the App Store and install a File Explorer. I recommend ES File Explorer. I think it's the best. Many Android devices don't come with a File Explorer built in by default, and often when they do, the functionality is limited. Next, you're going to want to go to download.blender.org slash demo slash android and you're going to want to pick up the latest of the APKs. The latest APK currently is Blender 081912.apk. Tap on that and use your downloader of choice to install it onto your device. The download should be quick, but I do not recommend using data to download any files. Once the download is complete, Navigate to your Downloads folder, and there you'll find Blender 081912.apk. Tap on the file and hit Install. Use the Package Installer. On many Android devices, the installation will be blocked. In Settings, you can enable Unknown Sources. Now that that's complete, we're going to need to hop onto our computer for a second. That way we can get a start file. By default, Blender for Android does not have a default scene, so we're going to need to import one from our computer. Plug your Android device into your computer. From your computer, go to Blender. I recommend deleting everything in the scene in advance. This will make it easier for you later on. Go to File, click Save, and save it directly to your desktop to make things easy. I like to call mine start.blend. Click Save Blender File. In your File Explorer, open your Android device. Enter it, and I recommend going to your Downloads folder. From there, you can move start.blend into the tablet. You can now unplug it from your computer. Back on your device, now that everything has been installed, go to Apps and find the Blender Player. Tap on the Blender Player and open it. You'll be presented with this screen. Hit Select Game. Then navigate to the location that is your Downloads folder. There you'll find Start.Blend. Select Start.Blend and select the normal way. Then press Start Blender Player.
This will launch Blender. This is not done, however. The interface is quite difficult to use. I'm going to show you a DIY trick on how to easily navigate the interface. For this, you're going to need a few items. Get a pen that's comfortable for you. And you're going to need some tin foil. You're also going to need some scotch tape. So, let's make it. It's quite simple, really. Take the pen of your choice, take the tin foil, and just put it around the front. There's a pretty good reason for this, and it has to do with the way most Android screens work. Make sure to make the tip nice and pointy. It'll improve the experience overall. Once it's in a good position for you, take the scotch tape, break off a piece, and tape the end onto your pen. The result, this, it doesn't look like much, but it will actually help you a lot more than you know. So, keep at least one of your fingers on the metal part of the pen. Now, you can use it to tap on the screen. Now you may be thinking, what about a Wacom pen? Those don't require batteries. Well, the answer is no. Wacom pens don't work on Android tablets. This has to do with the way Wacom designed the pen. It's not a receptive touch-like pen, but rather a special type of conductive material that corresponds with the way a tablet detects it. Short answer, it doesn't work. So, you need to use metal. This has to do with the fact that humans conduct electricity, even in small amounts. It's how your screen is able to respond without using real buttons. So, what we can do with this is a makeshift. Don't really worry about it scratching your screen. It's not really going to. The issue with this is you can't zoom in like some apps, so, you know, it's tough. Anyways, you can navigate the interface using this. It's still quite difficult, but it gets easier over time. Using this pen, you can switch engines and basically do anything you need to. I find it's easier to change around, uh, your display around by using the default presets. For example, I can tap on on the default using my finger or the pen. And the drop down menu will eventually show up. It's quite difficult though. For game development, you can go to game logic and get the panel out. But really, this player doesn't do games very well. What it does do well is animation. Navigating will require that you use the view panel. It's kind of hard to use, but will be pretty easy to get used to over time. Using the view panel, you can slowly orbit around the scene. It's a bit tough.
Everything you can do normally is still possible. The one thing that isn't possible, however, though, is changing text. I recommend setting up text files ahead of time on your Windows computer and, you, and using Blend as your default in order to do text. It's just really hard otherwise. One thing to note about if you leave the Blender player, as soon as you exit it to the home screen or hit the back button, it will immediately close the file you just used. This can be annoying, but you'll just have to learn to work around it. I recommend saving constantly so that you don't accidentally do this. Now you may wonder, what happens if I hook up a Bluetooth keyboard? Well, unfortunately, not a lot. Upon powering it on and connecting it, you just doesn't really do anything. It's because Blender for Android doesn't respond to keyboards of any kind. It's rather sad. When attempting to change text, I've tried to use the keyboard. It just doesn't do anything. I'm currently experimenting with ways of force opening the Android keyboard on the off chance that this might change anything. However, I'm starting to doubt it. When connecting a keyboard to Android using Bluetooth, it's the same thing as running the keyboard on your actual Android device, which has led me to believe that, no matter what, you can't actually change characters in Blender for Android. It's sad, but it's true. It's not impossible to navigate this screen, however. Oh, that's unfortunate. Anyways, in conclusion, this is a pretty good method of running Blender on Android. It's not too, too hard. It's a bit slow and tedious, but I've actually managed to create some pretty nifty things using this. It's also a fun way to kill time when you're out and about. In conclusion, that is how you install Blender on Android. And it's got, gives you a nice, simple way to navigate your interface. This doesn't just have to be for Blender also. You can control your device using this new pen of yours. And it really doesn't scratch your screen, so you don't have to worry about it. I've tested this pen on two different tablets and a phone. It varies. Not all use this kind of reception. I know some phones have actual proper buttons in the screen and won't actually respond to metals like this. But you never know. I recommend, if your device actually has a supported pen, just getting that. Anyways, I'm Contra Heidi, and I'll see you later.